of this because it's about recognising the prices of food. Now, we all know the food has gone through the roof at the moment. Prices are all over the place. When I did the quiz on the, uh, on the church picking away, since then the prices have gone through more. And it's very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to put up an item of food. And I want you to get now into like a little group around you. Hopefully with some children involved in it as well. But kind of make a little group. Say hello to some people around you. What sort of groups of about six or seven? Just kind of say hello to someone there by you. And this is how we're going to play, okay? Say your hellos. What we're going to do is we're going to put an item of food up on the screen and you will have 10 seconds to decide in your group how much is that item of food. Now, there are lots of supermarkets available. We know there's a wonderful weight throws. If you're slightly more into weight throws, or there's a Sainsbury's or Tesco's or Morrison's or Asda. But today, I'm loving Al because I live next to Aldi and Aldi is just wonderful. So all the items are from Aldi, so if you shop in Aldi, you're going to be well ahead of the game around. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you to shout out, one at a time, not one at the same time, roughly what price you think it is. The one who's closest to that price, my beautiful handsome Louis, is going to come along and give you a couple of chocolates if we get it correct, okay? So, you've only got a small box because obviously, you know, things are tight at the moment. So, just a couple of chocolates each one. Okay, so the first one is very simply the Aldi Smooth Tomato Pasta Sauce. How much do you think that is? We're going to have a find out, have a little discussion for five seconds. How much does that be? How much does that be? Okay, Cynthia, Cynthia is going to have 89p. You're going to have to change it. What do you reckon? 88p. Anybody else got all of them? 69. We've got 69. I'm going to take two more. Two more. Yes. 75 from their foot over the far side. 67. So we've got 67, 69, 88, 89. Here we go. Let's have a seat, guys. It's 65. Bring the ball over there. Well done. Fantastic. No children, just the two plus two jobs. Number two, let's take some food breaks. Oh, the classic four points of semi semi skin milk. I can remember the days it was a pound of all the I know Julia shops in Alvin because I saw him there the other day. How much do you reckon? 155 over there, or over there. I said that it was a game show. 155 over there. 130, you must be joking.
kind of living in extreme poverty. There's a statistic that there's 2.2 billion children in the world, and one billion of them are hungry tonight. That's a stand, that's like almost half the children in the world will go hungry tonight. And a horrible statistic that we lose about 22,000 children a day due to hunger. I mean, that is just unbelievable. And it's very hard in the Western world, particularly, when you're sitting here and saying, oh my goodness, you know, that's, that's kind of like, seems like a, a mile away. But actually, this is reality that we really are going through difficult times. I think you know there's enough food to feed everybody, so it's really hard. So, what can we do? You know, we have an amazing storehouse which Stephen and the team run in this, this church. It's fantastic, this church is always looking out. And this is the reflection today. We want to be really celebrate and thank God for all the things He's given to us. But we don't just want to stop there and say, great, it's great, yeah, I've got my food, I've got my, yeah, it's great. No, we want to be always saying, right, I've got this, but what can I give out? So this morning, you can walk past the storehouse desk, you can pick up a brown bag, and you can do a shot at our little waitress or wherever you want to go to. It doesn't take too much to fill it. Even if you want to just go and buy one item and bring that back, that is fantastic if that's all you can afford at the moment. But we should be giving out these bags every single week. There should be always kind of like, just keep giving them, keep giving them. Because we need to just be filling them up for the people, for the people around this area that are struggling. Absolutely. I agree. <laughs> you want the bag. So, a real challenge for us, particularly around the food, to just stop and reflect. You know, when you're having your food today, just stop for a second, reflect and think, what can I give? What can I do? Thank God for what I've given. You know, I support a child in the Dominican Republic through the organisation called Compassion. I wasn't sure whether I could do that. I wasn't sure whether I could fund that. But I went to an event and they were giving out these kind of photographs with children on them, which was a little bit kind of in your face, but it was great. And I said to God, look, God, if you want me to support this child or a child somewhere else, you're going to have to make a really clear sign. I was going to put it on the line with God. And when I got given this card, I looked at this guy's name, it's called I am Eli. I thought, that's nice. Oh, he's from the Republic. Oh, his birthday, 28th of April. Right, that's my birthday as well. Okay, okay, so I took him on board. And we, we've been supporting him for like 10 years or so. It's just amazing to be giving something each month for him and his family. And that just kind of is something I can do. Nothing much, but it's something I can do. So I challenge you this morning about what you can give in your circumstances. I'm going to hand over to Joy, who's going to talk a little bit about freedom. Freedom. And uh, I was struggling, I thought oh, it would be really cool if you could find. 
find a picture of what a million looks like. And uh, I really struggled to find what a million people would look like on a picture. So I did some, some research and um, I got some interesting facts about what a million is. So we can try and get our heads around this number. So one million seconds in days is 11.57 days. Can you count from one to days. It's 11.57 days. One billion seconds in days is 11,574 days, which translates to 31 years. Anybody 31 here? I wish. <laughs> no one's 31. <laughs> then I thought, oh, maybe if I brought like a billion grains of sand, and then I could do something like a, a representation of what a billion looks like if I had a billion grains of sand. And that's 11 tons of sand. So then I thought we probably wouldn't do that. Which, yeah, <laughs> Joe says it'll be really good for the carpet. Maybe we'll do it next week. And um, then I thought, well, 11 tons, that's a little bit difficult for us to understand as well. But a double decker bus, everyone seen a double decker bus? That weighs 12 tons. So when we started to see the, the picture of how big a million is, 5.2 million people don't have religious freedom. And so it's incredibly awesome that today we get to stand and we get to gather together and we can praise Jesus. We can celebrate his goodness, we can rejoice in everything that he's done for us, we can share his love that he has for us to those around us. But it's not to say that it's easy. Sometimes it's really difficult when we follow Jesus. Sometimes we have to make decisions that are not popular with our friends. Um, just this weekend we were chatting with the kids about why we're not doing trick or treating tomorrow. So sometimes we have to make hard decisions and sometimes we have to go against the flow of those friends or favor or family. I mean, if you talk to Chatan, he'll talk about how converting from Hindu to Christianity and the struggles that his family had with it. So it's not always easy following Jesus, but there's freedom that we can follow him in this country. And so this morning I really just love us to call and actually thank the Lord that we live in a country where there is religious freedom. We live in a country where we can praise him, we don't have to be afraid to do that. And later on, one of the activities that we're going to do is just to pray for the 5.2 billion people that don't have the freedom um, to celebrate Jesus and all that he has in an open way that we do today. <laughs> right, okay. So, we talked about freedom. And we've talked about food. Some people have got a few sweets. The last one is family. Um, so we want to celebrate the concept of family because it's rooted in God's character and his nature. The Bible says that God is relational and he's a loving father. But what do we mean by family? I think there are three ways that the Bible talks about when it comes to family. And I'm going to go through them very quickly. The first one is the family that is chosen for us. So God has given us a biological family. Put your hand up if you're a parent. Uh, put your hand up if you're a child. There's some people who haven't put their hand up. That's a bit worrying. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Bible tells us that we should honor our father and mother so that we have a long life and that our children are a blessing from God and a gift from God. That's not to say that everything is perfect. So yesterday, we came back from a few days away um, and my children look like my children, but they weren't behaving like my mystery children. Um, but they are still my children, and I will always love them, and God feels the same about us. So let's celebrate um, that we have parents, because without them, we would not be here. And if we weren't here, the world would not be as fun a place. Second one, um, we have the family that we can choose. So there's a story in the Bible about a guy called David, who had a really close friend called Jonathan. And Jonathan was the son of a guy who was trying to kill David. Um, but he loved David like a brother, and David loved David like a brother. And so they were always looking out for him and doing everything to make sure that David was okay, because David was on the run. I once read a phrase that said, family, sorry, friends are the family we choose for ourselves. So we should celebrate our friends who are close to us as a brother, 
or a sister or a parent. Okay, and the third one, let me just move that out of the way, um, is the family that God gives us or brings into our lives. Sometimes people come into our lives that God chooses. This could be because you've moved to a new place or a new school or a new job or maybe it's because of a difficult circumstance or a difficult time that you're going through. These people are not friends because we don't know them or have anything in common with them, but they come to walk alongside and encourage and support us. They might become friends, but you wouldn't normally choose them if you had a choice. And so look around. We are surrounded by family. Not everybody here is, is people you've picked, but God has picked them. They've come into our lives because God has picked them for us. God says he places the lonely in families and he sets the prisoner free and gives them joy. Which for me means that even if you have family around you and you have good friends, sometimes God will bring people into your life to help you or for you to help them so that you can bring God's joy into their lives. It might be a neighbor, someone at school, or even someone that God keeps getting you to think about. You just can't get them out of your mind. You know that person. So have a think about who this person would be as we continue through the rest of the service. Wendy. Are you having a great half term? Have you been having a wonderful half term? Who's been doing some football while they've been on half term? Hands up. Who's been? Yes. Oh, gosh. Who, who's been doing some other kind of sport? <laughs> Who has been doing some art and craft? Wave at me if you've been doing some knitting or some painting or some drawing. Awesome. Excellent. So you've all been having a wonderful half term. I'm so glad about that. Oh. Oh, dear me. Goodness me. Okay, so uh, you've all been enjoying some art and craft and some uh, football and enjoying your half term. Well, great, because there are also some other boys and girls all the way over in Uganda, in Africa, who also love football and art and craft and making things, and painting, and drawing, and doing things. But they don't have the opportunity to do it like you do. They don't live in lovely homes like you do. They don't have lovely bedrooms like you do. They don't have changes of clothes like you do. They don't have food on the table like you do. And I'm standing here this morning as your Caris Kids coordinator. Put up your hand if you know about Caris Kids. Yes, fantastic. That is one of the things that this church is brilliant and amazing at supporting. And uh, I would like to um, feed back to you. You were so generous and so brilliant at your fundraising recently. During the summer quiz, we, fun we did a summer quiz for Caris Kids. And we raised nearly £3,000 in profit for that. Give yourselves a round of applause. And we took um, a, a collection for our mission partners. That is uh, David and Mary, and Ned and Larissa, Paul and Katie, Josh and Amy. And we were able to give £921 to each of those mission partners. Give yourselves a round of applause. And we had a special fundraising mission for Caris Kids, and you raised, you generous, wonderful Winchester Vineyard givers, you raised £4,000. Give yourselves a round of applause for the Caris Kids uh, further education um, uh, to help these, these kids out there and to support summer camp. And I was blessed and fortunate enough to be able to go out to Uganda this August and help with the summer camp. 
So that in Uganda, there are hundreds of children who don't live like you do. They, if you can try and think of a, of a completely opposite way to the way they live, they don't have the luxury and the things that you do. Um, oh, forgot this, forgot this. I was going to ask, uh, I didn't want to be run over by loads of kids. I'm going to ask Lizzie and Hannah, bring your brother up, open the suitcase, and let's see what's inside that's made this so heavy. This is the exact suitcase, well, one of them, that I took out to Uganda. Here, here my love, Liz, there we go. Uh, this is one, my suitcase. It's lost a wheel on the way. Um, open it up. Open it up. What's inside that's made it so heavy? What? What's that? What is it? A toothbrush. A toothbrush. What else is in there? Nothing. Thing, just a toothbrush. Oh, Wendy, what's the matter with you? Pretending that this is so heavy. Right, thank you, kids. That's brilliant. My goodness gracious me, a toothbrush. I just want to tell you that when we went over to Uganda, we had 19, yes, 19 suitcases like this, 19 of them, and we took them all over to Uganda. Why has mine only got my toothbrush in? Because I, was only ha I only had room to pack my toothbrush, a change of clothes, and everything else. All these 19 suitcases were filled with all the art and craft materials that you guys paid for. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> please may you put the next slide on, please. And so there we go. Those are, so out in Uganda, there are hundreds of kids. Karis Kids supports numerous families. You are one of the, few, one of the many churches that, that help support Karis Kids. 287 of those children came for an amazing week in Kampala to enjoy arts and crafts and football and painting, something that they don't get to do. They don't get to do that. In their homes, they don't have toys and paper and pencils. They don't get to do it. Their lives are hard and tough. They have to spend their days going to find water and purifying it and cooking the very, very small amount of food that they get for their one meal a day. You heard Andy talking about breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know, they, they, are, they are so um, grateful for their one meal. So their lives are tough, hard, hard lives. One change of clothes, one meal a day, grafting, working, filtering water. They're here because of your generosity, because of your giving. They managed to have four or five days having a wonderful time painting. And one of my favorite things was we took over loads of beads and, and elastic and things. Um, I haven't got the photograph to show you, but one of my favorite pictures were these great big sort of African lads, you know, who thought they were really cool, you know, in their 20s. They were sat around the table with the elastic and the pink sparkly beads and making themselves bracelets and loving it. They went around the rest of camp playing football with all these pink sparkly beads around their wrists. Just was just brilliant. Let me take a breath. I get a bit uh, overexcited. So thank you very much for all your giving. You are amazing. Uh, next slide, please. So we're talking about celebrating. Oh, it must be the next one. Yes, that's it. Uh, oh, yes. Okay, that one, and there might be some others. So we're talking about feasting and celebrating. One of the other great things that they do while they're there is eat, because they only get their one meal a day, usually back in Kampala. But here, they had breakfast, they had lunch, they had tea, and they had mountains of, um, I've written it down, matoki and cassava and ground nut sauce and meat and melon and they filled their bellies with all this yummy food because you are a generous church. So thank you very much because they were so appreciative. 
So not only did they love the food and they loved the activity, but when we asked them what their favorite activity was in camp, uh, maybe have the next slide, please. Uh, okay, go back one, and please go back another. Perfect. Um, so when we asked them what their favorite activity was, actually, it was amazing. They said it was the Bible study and the worship. And these 280 kids that came, they were so passionate. They loved their worship. It was so lively, and they were so in the spirit, and they were playing, and it was brilliant. And we made a call, and we said, who would like to give their lives to Jesus? And out of those 287 children, do you know what? The Bible tells us that when one of us comes to faith in Jesus, when one of us comes to faith, all heaven celebrates and has a party and goes, whoop, whoop, they've joined eternity, they've become one of the family. 50, 50 children, 50 gave their lives to Jesus at the camp. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> Welcome them into the kingdom. That is 50 lives saved. 50. Imagine the party that was in heaven that night, all the celebrating. We had t-shirts, hope, hope alive no matter what. And so those children were learning that no matter what their circumstance, they have always got hope in Jesus Christ. There is always hope in Jesus Christ. And that's what they learned and that's what they loved. And they are now celebrating that they are in eternity. So please remember these guys in your prayers as well. Please may you go back a slide. And back another one. That's the one. I wanted to tell you about this. So... We support, you support, these families out in Uganda. And when I went out, I was able to visit your families. I went and visited your families where they live in and around Kampala. And I took your love, and I took your gifts, and I took your prayers, and I was there, not as myself, I was there representing you. And this lady, her name's Lillian. And she wasn't quite there when I got there. So her kids, they gave me a little plastic chair to sit on. And I had to sit on this plastic chair because they didn't want me sitting in the dirt, in the gutter. I sat on a little plastic chair on the, on the dirt, in the gutter, waiting for Lillian. And her kids were all around me. And I had, pres I had a present from her. She's linked to one of, one of the families in this church. And they'd given me a a gift to take out, and I had this present, and the children were chatting. And I saw Lillian, and I went to stand up to give her a big hug. Before I could stand up, before I had the chance to stand up, she fell at my feet. She fell prostrate at my feet in absolute gratitude for your love for your prayers, for your support. Because it makes the world of difference, the world of difference to them. It changes their lives, changes their lives. It gives them an opportunity that they would not otherwise have. So thank you. I have never had anybody fall at my feet before, and it wasn't about me, and it wasn't, it was about what I was representing. They are so grateful to you, so grateful to you. You change their lives. May we go to the last picture, please? That's the one. So who is looking forward to going back to school? Back to school tomorrow, whoop, whoop. Yeah, get that excitement, guys. Get that excitement. Okay. So you are going to go back to school tomorrow. You lucky, lucky, lucky things. Because do you know what? Here in England, you get to school for free. You go to school and your parents don't have to pay for you to go to school. It's there for you. 
your free education. What happens if you don't go to school? And don't tell me that you have lots of fun at home. Okay? If you don't go to school, if you don't get an education, what's the consequence? What's the result of that? What's the downside? Come on, shout out at me. Some kids, if you're not going to go to school, what's not going to happen? You're good. Exactly that. You're not going to get a job. Why not? Because if you don't, don't go to school, you can't get a job because you haven't learned anything. You go to school to learn things, to learn how to add up, work out whether the chap who's employed you is paying you the right amount of money, work out how to pay your taxes. Right? You, can't, you don't know how to add up, you don't have to read, you don't have to write, you don't know how to do things. You go to school to learn things. And that is your passport to a job. And if you have a job, what can you do? You, you can earn money. Brilliant. Then you can buy a change of clothes and you might be able to one day buy a house, okay? These guys in Uganda have to pay for their education. They have to pay to go to school. And to be quite frank and to be quite honest, if it's a choice between putting food in their belly or going to school, they will scavenge around to get some money to feed themselves and not go to school. But you guys, because you are amazing and generous and you support families, you pay for them to go to school. You pay for their education, which changes their lives. Because they go to school and they learn stuff. And then they can get a job. And then they could take their family out of this poverty life that they live in. So, I am just appealing to you on behalf of Phoebe. Phoebe is the carer for all of these uh, people here you can see in this. And they, they are £50 a month short of being able to send these kids to school. So, in everything that you are doing today... I would like you to bear in mind Phoebe and her family and the extra 50 pounds that they need a month to get these kids to school. And I would like to just ask you to prayerfully consider what it might be that you possibly could do to help. It might be just to pray, and that would be fantastic because we know that prayer works. But if there's anything else that you can do, please contact myself or Edward, and we would be delighted to work something out. But please pray for them. Please consider them. Please think about them, because they change people's lives. And remember how Lillian fell at my feet in absolute gratitude for everything that you do. Thank you very much for your support of Caris Kids. You are an amazing, amazing church. I'm going to take my suitcase and my toothbrush and go home. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping Wendy uh, took toothpaste as well as toothbrushes. <laughs> cool. So um, we have got three awesome activities and stations that we're going to split into now. Um, at the back of the hall, we're going to be doing uh, notes. So we can do thank you notes or um, cards that we want to give to people. So focusing on family or friends. Uh, Wendy's going to man the table. So I'm sure if you wanted to write a letter to one of the kids at Karis, kids, that will also be really awesome. But um, anybody that you'd want to write a thank you or happy birthday, write a card, write a letter, it's going to be at the back over there. Then through... Uh, the cafe area, we have a selfie station. Oh, come on, that's, that's pretty fun. So uh, we've got some props, and you can put hats on whatever and take pictures as families, take pictures of friends. Um, like Chatham was saying, the family around you are not necessarily the family you've chosen, so maybe grab your life group, take a picture of your life group, because that's a awesome way that family operates in church through life groups. So have some fun, take some pictures in the cafe on your, what's this, right-hand side, as I'm looking out. And then on your left-hand side 
is going to be a planting station. So Andy spoke about food, and one of the ways that we thought could be quite a practical way of uh, helping people with food uh, today would be to plant food. So there's going to be a station there with Jim and his boys, and uh, we're going to be planting stuff for the storehouse. I haven't told Stephen this yet, but we're going to have hundreds of pots growing lettuce and herbs and radishes that once they are grown and looking yummy, we can then give out as part of the storehouse giving. So go and plant something, which would be awesome. And then finally, in the front over here, the Hingstons are going to be praying for the 5.2 billion people, uh, 25 tons of rice. Uh, they're going to be praying for the uh, people that don't have religious freedom, persecuted churches across the various countries. So if you'd like to spend some time praying, that's going to be at the frontier. Obviously, very welcome to mix around and do all the activities or just stay at one station, depending on what you feel. So we'll be doing that for 10, 15 minutes. On your marks, get set, go!